everyone. I'm so glad you're here. And I'm so glad that you are thinking about trying encaustic. Encaustic can be a little bit intimidating at first, but it is so rewarding and so lovely to work with that I'm really excited to be sharing this with you. I started encaustic with very few supplies and I have loved it ever since. And so I'm going to show you how I set up my space in an easy way that's safe. The first thing I want to show you is this mini griddle that I use to melt my wax. The important thing is that it has temperature control here. I'm trying to remove it to show you. So here. You can set it at uh, different temperatures, but it's not always fully accurate and especially this one doesn't have the temperature in degrees on it, but I, it has just one, two, three, four, five. So it's really important that you can check the temperature of your wax. And so I'm using this little surface thermometer. It allows me to keep the temperature of my wax just where I want it at 200 degrees. So these are both really inexpensive and you can find them at your local store or on Amazon. That's where I bought mine. For the projects in this course, we're going to use some clear encaustic medium. This is beeswax melted and mixed with Damar resin. You can purchase some ready-made, but I make my own and so it has the form of little cakes like that. So you can find some online either as little granules. Uh, you can also buy some from uh, Etsy. Many shops sell encaustic medium and it comes in bars or in little cakes like the ones I have. I am melting my wax in a loaf pan. I find it really easy. It fits just right on my griddle. And I find that it uh, heats the wax really well. So this is what I'm using. Very inexpensive too. And for the projects in the course, we are going to use some white encaustic paint as well. So you can buy this ready-made too, but it's very easy to make your own because it's just uh, encaustic medium mixed with a bit of white oil paint or white oil stick. So this is what I'm using, these big oil sticks. Sometimes I use my my white oil paint. So this way I can just make the paint as I go. If I run out of paint, I can just make some more. So this is a, a simple tuna can. Really nothing fancy, but it works perfectly. The brushes I use are called hacky brushes and they are very soft. This one is hard because it's full of wax but when they are new, they are like that. Maybe I have a big one to show you, yes. So this is really soft and it spreads the melted wax beautifully. If you can't find any of these, no problem. You can use any regular flat brush that has natural bristles. You don't want to use any synthetic brushes because with the heat of the griddle, they would melt. So really make sure that you get natural bristle brushes. Make sure you have two, one for your um, encaustic medium and one for your paint because you don't want to go back and forth and have some white mixed with your medium if you want to keep it clear. This is cool at the moment. So the wax is opaque, but it will become clear and more golden when it melts. So you want to protect your surface where you're going to be working. The easiest way is to use some wax paper. The other thing you will need is something to fuse the wax. So what I'm using is a craft heat gun. It's not a heavy duty heat gun, but it's still very hot. So you want to make sure that you don't come too close to the wax with that and make sure that you're safe 
no flowing hair or clothes or jewelry with that and make sure that when you put it on your surface it doesn't touch your surface so this one has a little stand in it but you can use any other way to put it aside safely there are other types of craft dryers that you can use some people use a torch but I don't like that I'm not comfortable with that but in any case I really advise you not to use a hair dryer hair dryers they blow a lot of air and they don't heat the wax enough but they keep moving it with the air so you don't get really good results really try to find something that you can use safely and that will give you beautiful results because otherwise you'll get frustrated and that's not the point point. and lastly you want to gather a variety of tools to work with the wax so I use these um, sculpting modeling tools this needle tool which is part of the set I use it a lot to make scratches and little holes to make marks to write into the wax so this is really a great tool to have and you can also use lots of tools uh, from around your kitchen I have these fork and knife and spoons anything I can put my hands on that I can use for the wax I will try I love to experiment and find ways to use ordinary tools and turn them into art making tools but just remember that any tools you use for your wax you will not use them in your kitchen again same thing for your griddle you need to have a griddle that's just for the wax don't use it uh, to cook I also want to say a few words about substrates the substrates that you can use so the first I want to show you is the one I use the most and that I make myself this is actually a very ordinary MDF panel that I had cut to size at my DIY store they come so cheap and they are great to work with they take the heat well and I like that they are not too thick not too thin and what I do is I gesso the sides to make them white and then I glue down some heavy watercolor paper on top you can also purchase these ready-made uh, encaustic boards they are really nice too these are really thin you can use some cradled wood panels so these you can paint and collage with the wax directly on the surface you don't need to prepare it first so these are nice this one is thin and comes from the craft store actually and this one is really better quality it has thick edges which I like and that one comes from the art store the really great thing about using these little cheap homemade substrates is that you don't get precious about them so you can try many things experiment you know they cost about a dollar so really inexpensive and you can make as many as you want and here for instance is my little test board where I do all sorts of marks where I try new things where I try uh, to collage new papers or make transfers this is also where I can test out the temperature of my wax if I'm not sure it's just right and so this is really something I can work with when it's cool and dry like that you don't have to work with the wax all the time with your griddle and the heat but you can use it also when it's um, cool it's really fun just to reveal some text that I have here underneath some white paint so this is really just to experiment 
And lastly, uh, I really want to insist that you stay safe at all times. Use your common sense. When you keep your wax at the right temperature, it will not overheat. It is not toxic at all. There are no fumes and it is safe, but you still want to have good ventilation at all times. So actually right now I'm working under a skylight just above me. So when I heat my wax, I will open my window and I will open the door behind me and open the window in the next room. So this way I have a good flow of air at all times. And finally, you want to have water nearby. Working with wax can be very dehydrating. So you really want to have water to drink and remember to drink regularly. And it's also important to have a bucket of water or a sink nearby because if you burn your fingers, for instance, here, if I have the griddle too close to my hands, I could get burned. It's really important to be able to put your hands in water as soon as possible if you get a, a small burn. So just be safe at all times. If you want to use gloves, you can. Lots of people uh, like to use gloves, disposable gloves. I don't like that. Uh, I'm not comfortable with that. It gets too hot on my hands, but it's totally an option. So I think that's it. I hope you'll give Encaustic a try. And it's really a beautiful natural material to work with and it gives beautiful results. Actually, I'm going to show you the, the sample piece that I did for the class so you can really see what it looks like. So this is one of the projects we're going to make. I'm going to zoom in and try to show you up close. So this is a really fun project because we are using wax to collage lots of um, paper and fiber elements. Then we carve into the wax to create uh, a landscape and there are words hidden underneath the wax here. It's such a, a beautiful medium to work with and it can yield unexpected results and I hope you'll love it.